Hi-Fi Rose are a manufacturer that has made a really big impact on the world hi-fi scene with their music streaming DAX. And I think they have been really clever to release a product like the RS150 because it is a standout product. It stands out because of that huge screen on the front. And that screen is a really nice design touch and it is very futurefy to steal the words of John Darko. And I really like it and I've been really impressed with the RS150, but if I was to say I've been spending about 90% of the review time with the screen off, hopefully that starts to give you more of the full picture of what this product offers, because it is a product that offers a lot of bells and whistles that all make sense when you start to play with them. So this review is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be 10 reasons to buy a Hi-Fi Rose RS150. I think I need to start this review with a clarification. I have here the Hi-Fi Rose RS150B. The B is a newer revision model that features an ESS Sabre 9038 Pro DAC chip, not an AKM based DAC chip that was in the original model. And I think this is due to chip shortages that we've seen over the last couple of years. But I have been promised and told that the new version is designed to sound exactly the same. They're both models are supposed to sound exactly the same, with the only real difference being the output voltage is lower on the B model. But I can't confirm any of this, so please do take this into account for this review that I have the B model here. And with that out of the way, the reason to buy a Hi-Fi Rose number one has to be sound quality because priced at £3,899, that's a fair old chunk of money. And there is a huge amount of competition from lower price rivals that punch above their price weight, such as the Aurelic Altair G1 that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. But straight away you can hear the RS150B offers more. The sound it produces is bigger, more full of energy, and it has an immediacy to it that makes you feel like there is less between you and the music happening in front of you. Its timing is really superb, and there is lots of details and micro details resolved in music, but in a nicely balanced way. And I'm not always the biggest fan of ESS Sabre DAC chips because they can sound a little too organized and technically precise for my personal tastes. And the Rose does sound like that a little, or to some extent, but not too much to lose the sense of rounded musicality. However, I will say I think the Rose has a younger person type of sound, very lively, energetic, and quite up front, which works great for my current favorite album called Good by Soon T, because the big reggae beats and hard hitting percussion and, and energy of the music really comes through. And there are a number of different DAC filter modes you can choose between, but in my system, I found all the others except minimum phased fast roll off sounded too energetic and too lively and too much of a good thing for me. And it was possible to improve the sound of the RS150 with some of its many options, which we'll talk about shortly. But overall, I have really been enjoying listening to it for its good sense of clarity, it's good soundstage, it's good tonality, it's good solid bass, and definitely it's sense of occasion. It brings music and gives music energy and, and creates a really nice sense of occasion with music. And yeah, it gets a big tick in the sound quality box. Reason number two is ease of use. Thanks to that big 14.1 inch touchscreen, I found it extremely easy to log into my Cobuzz account and have music playing within minutes of powering on. I also really liked what's called the input and output settings because I really liked how a simple set of input and output controls can be made cool by displaying them visually. It's a simple thing, but it makes a difference. It was easy to get music playing from Cobuzz, but to get full functionality, you will need to set up a free Hi-Fi Rose account. And you can do all of this from the front touchscreen or via the free Hi-Fi Rose app, 
which on my iPad Pro, I must say, is a fantastic app and I found it very easy to learn. And that is reason number three. The Hi-Fi Rose app is visually satisfying and it's gratifying to use with the main buttons always accessible at the bottom for what you might need, such as accessing settings, opening cobars, internet radio, podcasts, and more. And I like the way a play queue is built and you access it by pulling out the section to the right. And the play queue can be made up of music from any source, but you can easily organize it by selecting just the music from Cobuzz in that queue, for example. And the app is really fast in operation and was mostly excellent, but I did find a few bugs and one annoyance where if you select the album art to pull up a detailed playing page, it kind of gets in the way of you accessing other things. So there is still some room for improvement with the app, but I've got to say overall, I found it pretty damn fantastic, easily as good as any other manufacturers produced app that I've used and probably better than most of them. And reason number four is RoseTube, which is Hi-Fi Rose's version of YouTube. And you might ask, what is the difference? And that difference is really easy. RoseTube is all about music and there is no adverts. So you can build a genuine music play queue or playlist of YouTube music and listen to it without any interruption. And you might ask, why would you want to as YouTube is compressed? Well, it's also free. It's free music for pretty much all music. There is loads of music on YouTube, including live concerts and more. And the sound quality is surprisingly very decent, depending on the content quality. And listening to some older Snoop Dogg songs, they sounded old, but still decent. It's also really useful for music discovery. And a cool gimmick feature is if the music has a video, the video plays on the front screen, except the screen ratio being so wide, the picture is really quite small in the middle. So I couldn't really see it at 12 or so feet away. So that definitely makes it feel more like a gimmick, except does it? Just hold that fault, just hold that fault for a second. Number five is flexibility. The easiest way to connect to the rows is via the network and you can do pretty much everything from there, but you also have a multitude of different digital inputs, USB, balanced AES, optical coax, and HDMI arc. And then you have both single and balanced analog outputs from the internal DAC for connecting to whatever amplifier you have. But you also have a multitude of different digital outputs, including I2S for connecting to an external DAC, which allows for future-proofing your digital upgrade itis. And the internal DAC is MQA full decoder compatible for those who want that, and the ROSE is Rune ready. And you can also add a Hi-Fi Rose CD-ROM drive to play CDs and rip them to an internal hard drive that you can choose to add, extending the rows to music and music video server duties. To me, that's offering something for pretty much everyone for today, but also something for everyone over many different tomorrows. And I really appreciate that. And number six is HDMI. And there are two HDMI connections. So you could take a HDMI arc feed from your TV into the hi-fi rows and then use your hi-fi system for the TV sound. I think more likely is you will use Rose Tube and send music videos picture to your TV so you can watch them properly on a big screen with the sound again coming from your hi-fi system again with no adverts. And all of this is not new, really. You, you can get all of these features from an Apple TV box, which costs significantly less, and that will show you the, the music's lyrics as well. But it's definitely a standout novelty feature within a high-end hi-fi music streamer. And I do think that hi-fi Rose owners will use this feature and actually like it and appreciate it. Number seven is upsampling. And Upsampling is definitely not a new or novel thing, and it's offered in a lot of products these days, but I don't often use it because I just don't always like the effect of it. Sometimes it just seems to accentuate details at the expense of musicality. But interesting, the upsampling in the Hi-Fi Rose, using the internal DAC, I tested all of the different options and 176.5 kilohertz seemed to be the one because I lost nothing but gained solidity and fullness to how all music sounded. So I was happy and kept it like that for everything going forwards. Number eight is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. 
only if you want it. The Rose comes with a USB dongle for if you want to use Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi. And initially I was a little put off and put out by this because it felt like, you know, something like this should be built into the unit itself. Although I soon realized that I actually didn't use, I didn't want to use either of these two features. So having, you know, not having to have massive aerials sticking out of the back for something I wouldn't even use was actually a positive. The only downside to this is the included remote control is Bluetooth based, not infrared. So most users will probably want to install the dongle, but not for me because I didn't need it. And number nine is aesthetics. I really like the look of the RS150. Of course, the screen on the front is visually very striking, but that aside, and viewed from a sides on angle, she is very easy on the eye. The top plate is very nice. The all aluminium chassis is just very nice, and it feels quality in your hands, even if not massively heavy. And all of the connections feel sturdy, and the Rose feels like a well-built product befitting the price tag. On the inside, looking at some published images, I like the fact that there is a linear power supply being used and I like all the custom PCBs. And that leads me nicely onto number 10 that I've deliberately saved until last and that is the big screen on the front because I really like it. I think it's really nice and I think it's definitely nicer than I don't know, plain old boring black and white or green and black or green and white, whatever it is we see on some other manufacturer competitor products. And it does make a difference, I think, for pride of ownership. Something really nice like this big screen makes a positive impression on you emotionally. However, like I said at the start of the video, I used the Rose 90% of the time with the screen turned off. Why? Because I felt it sounded better with the screen turned off. Just a little bit more smooth and rounded off on the edges and just a little bit edgy. Not a night and day difference, not a I could pick it out every single time in a blind test type of difference. But subjectively listening to it, I felt it sounded just that little bit better with the screen off. So that was naturally what I did. However, I do think you would need a really good hi-fi system in a really good room to even notice any difference. And you can always take the HDMI out, feed that to your TV, turn the screen off, still get your image and picture, and then you have the best of both worlds. And I want to throw in one more reason to buy the RS150 as a bonus. But before I do, I want to talk about some negatives because a big touch screen <laughs> means inevitably big finger prints. And while it's far from the end of the world, I personally like my hi-fi system to have the least amount of fingerprints and dirt and dust and, you know, muck on it as possible. So, you you know, you kind of can't have a touch screen without fingerprints. The other thing or potential negative is sound quality. Because a product like this, a hi-fi streaming DAC, you really do have to like the sound quality of it. And yes, of course, you could buy an external DAC, but I think when you buy a product like the Hi-Fi Rose, you're buying it for all of its features. You're buying it to be a streaming DAC. So you really need to like the sound of it with your current Hi-Fi system. Obviously the future, Flexibility can be different, but I think initially you really have to like the sound of it. And it's younger or more modern type of sound presentation, lively up front, really energetic and quite dynamic. I personally really liked it, worked really nicely in here. But I think back to my review of the Kerry Audio DMS 700 streaming DAC, which costs a lot more money, but it has more of a relaxed, more easygoing, more warm type of sound delivery. And Again, it costs a lot more money, but I think it just shows there are different ways of creating a product like this. So sound quality is really, really important and it's something that you obviously just have to listen to and make your own mind up. And there's one more thing I want to discuss, and it's definitely not a negative. It can't possibly be a negative, but I feel like a product like this, the Hi-Fi Rose RS150, because it's trying to offer so many features, it's trying to offer so much in the one product, it is primed to also offer a room correction system, something like Dirac Live, which is obviously something I personally use all of the time. And I feel like a streamer or a source product is the best place to have something like Direct Live and with all the functionality, the connections and everything that goes on with the RS150 it is the perfect product to offer something like Direct Live. So I can't say it's a negative because it's not on the feature list. It can't be a negative. You can't criticize something for not delivering something that's not promised, but maybe it's on the wish list for the RS150 Mark II.
Coming back to reason number 11 to buy an RS-150, being able to listen to some music and then watch some music videos without any interruption, with very good sound quality for all of it, all controlled really easily within one app. Adds another dimension to music listening and that dimension is fun. It's really fun to sit and do it. And of course you can be really serious, critical listening, you know, a serious, critical listening grump with the RS-150 as well, because that is my normal demeanor. But you know, not every day do we want to do that. Sometimes we just want to listen to music for a bit of fun. And that is what I think the RS-150 does better than any of the other streaming DAC products that I've reviewed so far. It creates, it gives you this wonderful sense of flexibility. That is really fun. It's a really fun, enjoyable product to use and that is why I said it is the one to beat because when you roll all of what it can do up into one package, yes, other solutions will better it in certain individual specific areas, but when you roll it all up into one package, it's really offering a really nice, well thought out, well developed, really striking product because of that screen that's really feature packed, but also really flexible. <laughs> it really is offering a lot they are in, all in the one product, and that is the reason why I said it is the product or the one to be. It's definitely much, much more than a music streaming DAC with a fancy screen as a gimmick. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed the review, smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. Of course you have. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.